Yes, I mean, I'm, I was out there uh, some 25 years ago telling people that um, the universe was a black hole uh, and that there was black holes in the center of all galaxies. And I was, um, I was not a popular fellow in those <laughs> physics conferences saying this stuff. Um, and it, it was predicted by the theories I was writing. Uh, it made sense to me. Um, mm -hmm. it, it made sense to me that there would be singularity at the center of all galaxies, but, but it made sense to me as well that the singularities would be the driving mechanisms of the galaxy, not the result, um, which, mm -hmm. you know, for many, many years, they thought that the black holes that they eventually found in the center of all galaxies were just a result of star collision in the, in the nuclei of the galaxy. Um, when I was telling them, no, no, that's the driving mechanism of the galaxy. And now they found, of course, black holes were present prior to the galactic formation. So, th so they're starting to get that view. Um, I'm still, you know, way outside the box when I'm telling them that stars are the same mechanism, that, uh, that there's singularities at the center of stars and that the singularities are the driving mechanism that makes that plasma ball we call a star and that when the plasma ball actually explodes which we call a supernova explosion a supernova um, uh, uh, dynamic um, that the black hole we see after is not a black hole that formed as a, as the result of the explosion but actually that it's a that it was the black hole that was always present at the center of the star that is now being visible because the plasma, which is called the orgosphere around the black hole, has been blown off. Uh, and it blows off because of mechanisms that are similar to what we describe in the carbon cycles uh, of stars, where, where certain shells get formed because the plasma cools off and, and, and uh, the shells get form in the other layers and pressure builds on the inside and eventually the whole thing explodes. Um, and then it, 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 you know, it liberates material in the, in, the, in the environment of that singularity, that star, uh, which is now seen as a black hole. And that material gathers us around smaller singularities in the structure of the vacuum. And those are, eventually coalesce as planets. Um, and this is why exoplanets, planets that were found outside our solar system, were first found around pulsars, which is the remnant or the black holes that are the remnant of, of, uh, of um, supernova explosion. And, 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 and all the mainstream, the astrophysicists were couldn't believe, like, how can they be stars around pulsars? How can they, it's such a, you know, it's such a harsh environment. How, this is the last place we would have thought to find planets, but that's the first place they start to find planets. Um, <laughs> and, and, and then, you know, and, and, and so it was exciting for me because it totally confirmed the model I had all, already developed in uh, star formation and star evolution and solar system and planetary science. And, um, and, you know, since then we've, we've found that there's planets almost around every single star that we observe. Um, there's actually plan, you know, stars without planets are actually more rare than they thought. And, um, and so, you know, this mechanism of planet formation, uh, including for our sun, so people say, well, if our sun is a black hole, how is that possible? Well, of course, if you write the equations and calculate like the Schwarzschild solution, for instance, for our sun, our sun being a black hole would require that it has a diameter, I believe, or a circumference of 18 kilometers. And that's not the case. We can clearly see the sun is much larger than that. So, so the tendency is to say, well, the sun cannot be a black hole. It doesn't have the correct density to be a black hole. But that's uh, assuming, and you know, I'm going to say it again, and I know like eventually they'll get there, <laughs> assuming <laughs> that 
you know, the sun is homogeneous or somewhat homogeneous. And what I'm saying is that it's not, it's not homogeneous. The, the central part of the sun is collapsed into a singularity. The, the, the singularity is at the center of this orbital system that produces massive amount of energy. And it has accumulated, it has what we call accreted material all around it. And uh, that material is because the, the black hole, the singularity is spinning at very high velocity, things can be in orbit around it. Like people say, well, why is it not all getting sucked into the black hole? Well, because black hole actually cannot absorb much matter. Um, they can't because they're spinning at very high velocity and it spins the material out. And so there's states of balance between the singularity. And that's why there's black holes in the center of galaxies and, and galaxies don't get just sucked into the black hole. It's because, the, I mean, when they just they discovered in the last few years, black holes in the center of galaxies spin at over 80% of the speed of light. This is significantly fast. And <laughs> you can imagine the Coriolis and and centrifugal forces that are involved in such a spin. And of course, and, and they were noticing that not much matter could fall in in that. In, more matter would be flung out. And then there's the, there's, there's, there's the fact that what I believe from the physics I wrote is that, that not only black hole accrete matter, but black hole produce matter, produce protons at their event horizon, that there's matter production that's occurring because it's interacting with the vacuum. And uh, these equations of holographic mass are really the first step in describing this matter production at the event horizon of black holes. And so anyway, this, all this like gives a completely different picture of cosmogenesis, of mm -hmm. what we're living in, of uh, the evolution of solar systems, and eventually the evolution of little humans on them that... Um, you know, that are able to actually cognitively um, compute all this stuff and, and actually think about it, which, which is the most remarkable, yeah, exactly. uh, you know, about the whole thing is that we can actually think about it.